for the ibadah of Allah Taala is also one of the big ibadah itself. So therefore, exercise is a big part of it, and eating less is a big part of it. There are many, many hadiths about the other way that your stomach can stand quite a bit. It's not about filling the stomach, but it's about fulfilling the hunger that you have. So therefore, the Prophet of Allah Taala is that we need to get formula for that. Do not be lazy. Do not eat too much. Because this will lead you towards sleeping and oversleeping and missing salawat. So therefore, understanding that is very important. So exercise, eating, and also the idea of getting things done now, not to put it off for tomorrow. Many times when we get up for fajr and the alarm rings, we we have that button called smooth. I think if you just say lazy on it, we hit it. Go back to sleep for 10, 15 minutes, and sometimes the sun is up, and then you get up and say, "What happened?" Oh, I hit it too many times. Perhaps I don't remember doing it. And these are the things that we should be aware of, that we do things out of laziness. We do things because we think we have more time. Oh, I can sleep in an extra half hour. But sometimes, you know, but we dare not miss an interview, miss a train or miss something. We'll be up way before that because we don't want to be standing there and saying, I couldn't make the interview because I went to sleep. So when we say that to Allah, kind of fell out of bed just when I was sleeping, I couldn't get up. This is one of the weapons that they brought to let you sleep or let you rest more and to say you have more time. This is one of the weapons that's been released. And of course, young people that say, I have a long life to go, I don't have to pray my nafsah, I don't have to pray my sunnah, I don't have to do what I You have to force young people to do the simple salawat after the fudge. They'll run. And the idea of just having sabr and you're not to sit after the, after the fudge salah and spend one minute with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to say to him, Allahumma anta salam wa minta salam, salam wa ta'ala 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 wa Tell him, I am Kursi, Ya Allah, I, I praise you, I, I beseech you, because you are the Lord of me and everyone else. This simple patience to sit at the place of prayer, people sometimes don't even do that, they just run right after the salam they're done. But this is a requirement of many of the Sahaba and many of the great ulama who sit in one place, and they don't move until they praise Allah for all they have done, and then they get up and they walk. So we should have the summer, we should have the not the laziness to just run away, but to sit for one minute and thirty seconds or something like that and say, Ya Allah, I'm grateful to you, I have worshipped you. And of course parents make the same mistake and many times the Imam get people who are having trouble with their teenagers and teenage girls and boys. She doesn't cover up, she doesn't wear the proper clothes, she doesn't pray so lot, the answer is me back. But where was it when they were young all of these years, laziness and raising them saying they have more time? They don't need to pray salah now. I hear so many parents say, we run a school in our life, the people say all the time, they have time, don't worry about it. But 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 years fly by and we look at them and they have facial hair and they say, MashaAllah, you're 20 years old now. I remember when you were just 6. So time flies. And of course, we don't understand that. Because the habits we build in, and to say it, we can do this tomorrow, we can do this next year or five years from now, is a mistake. And this is part of Shaitan telling us to be lazy. So we should be aware of that. And one of the things we also hear all the time is I'm very busy. Uh, I have a job, I have, I have no time. But we know in the Quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created the nature of man himself. Allah has created him in anxiety that this person, every one of us, we have issues. We have need, we have want, we have desire. Every one of us feels some sorrow and some happiness. But all of these things are part of our heart. It's all tiring to hear someone say, I don't have time, I don't have time for Ibadah, I don't have time for this, I don't have time. Yes, you do have time for this. And you have time because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you time. And when it's gone, it's gone forever, it's never coming back, you're not coming back. So this idea of I don't have time is not there. And the idea of being busy is also ridiculous. In the insana, khulifa khalua. And Allah has created human beings in this idea of you know, being impatient, the idea of not being, you know, like getting things now. They're, they're, they're eager, but yet the eagerness sometimes doesn't pay off. But they're always looking for eagerness. We can look for things, for example, in terms of our devices and say, I want this device to run 10 apps at one time. It has to be, you know, running this, this, and this, and this, but yet we as Muslims sometimes can even do two things with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So therefore we should understand what we demand of ourselves and others in our lives, we should also demand from our own personal ibadah and make sure that laziness is not cut them. There's no procrastination in our lives. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says many, many places in the Quran that people will stand in front of him on the day of judgment and they will be the ones who don't even do the simple acts. 
And Allah says, Jahannam is for you because you can't even do simple things and you pray so much. Simple things, and we tell Allah, we'll talk about that in the second part of the Qutbah. Just as the Qutbah, Allah says, is rush towards doing the good deeds, rush towards them. And no matter where you are, Aina Matakuna, wherever you are, go do them. And don't wait for them, and don't wait for Shaytan to tell you you have more time. Secondly, ask him for forgiveness. Another weapon of Iblis himself. Iblis says you are doing haram anyway. Don't make tawbah, don't make maqtara. Don't ask for it, because Allah doesn't give it to you because you're not worthy of it. There are people who cry and say, I'm not worthy of it, brother, make you for me. But why? Why do you feel so dejected and low that you, you feel that Allah is now forgiven? Uh, everyone else except you. So they come cry and say, yeah, I'm not made the law for me and because I'm not worthy of asking Allah. But this is the, the weapon of Shaitan who come and say, you are already doing riba and you're already doing haram. Therefore, what is this thing that you're asking from Allah? How dare you sit here and ask this, you know, and it's amazing how the tricks he plays, Shaitan. He comes and tells the believers to commit sin, but when they commit sin, he says, you're not worthy of forgiveness to go back. So there's a, there's a game being played by Shaitan, that's why he is one of the greatest enemies, and Allah says the greatest enemy of all of mankind. Because of his nature and what he does for us. And we fall into that same trap, thinking that I'm not worthy of it. And this is also laziness, to turn and not sit there and ask Allah, and to say quietly, Ya Allah, I've made a mistake, forgive me, and cry, and tell Allah, I don't want to do this anymore, you don't look inside me. This is part of making us to not sit there and teach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Have you ever heard of Islam in this society itself? And again, I don't have to compare ourselves to them because the Allah, they don't believe in Allah and the Akhira. But you can see the cause of their laziness. You can see what they do in terms of the laziness. And all of the things that they build, the institutions around, insurance companies that feed their laziness, the, uh, the idea of their diet shelves, the idea of all of those things that they sell on television to, to feed laziness. Because they want shortcuts very quick and very fast. Because they don't want to make the effort of doing simple things in their life. So therefore, some of them prey on each other and say, because of your laziness, I have some solutions for you. And there's many things like this that we should warn our children that we shouldn't fall into the path of those who disbelieve in Allah and fall for the, the easy solutions in this, in this dunya. That we should work hard for the things. That we should not look for things that make things easy on us and then bring us towards the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَلَا تُزَكُّ And sometimes there are people when you tell them, why don't you make salah, why don't you pray and to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, why don't you be next to nothing? They will say, Allah knows my heart, I am good, Allah knows me, I'm clean hearted, I don't, I don't talk about anyone else, I'm very clean. So this clean heartedness is the weakness of this person, that person is very lazy. To proclaim themselves to be clean is also a, a, a way of arrogance, even though they think it's humble. But it's not really humble, it's exactly laziness and arrogance. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns them, Salatu Zakku. Salatu Zakku al Kutaku. Do not say to yourself that you're clean. Do not actually be pointing this to yourself. Don't say that you have a pure heart. And Allah says, Who Alamu be Mahim Zaha? And he knows best who he drives, meaning that Allah knows best who is driving himself and his soul. Who are Allah will be putting he knows very well what you do and what you are, what your nature is that you create in every one of us. And imagine, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, if we did not cut our hair, nails, if we did not take baths every day, if we did not clean our clothes, we would smell, we would be dirty, we would not be very clean and uh, we would be unkempt. And imagine someone walking by on the meeting and saying, my God, what is wrong with you? You smell, you stink. But how do we, in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, stand on the day of judgment when we don't have any of the ibadah? And we stink because we were not worthy of even the salawat on the day of judgment. You have to think about that there is a purity, not just of the body and, and, and physical behavior, but also the purity of the nuts, nuts itself. If you have to keep it clean, you have to nurture it, you have to wash it, you have to purify it. You have to make sure that it's aware and it's, it's functioning properly. That on the day of judgment, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not look at our bodies, what does he look at? He looks at our nuts. He doesn't even look at our bodies. There's an eye in the Quran. Allah says, I don't even look at your physical, you know, outlook. It doesn't matter what you look like as a Muslim. I look at what's inside your heart, which is enough itself. So therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may he guide us to the cleanliness of the inside, save us from the laziness and the procrastination that we always fall into, and bring us to proper actions and proper plans.
فاستغفروه انه هو الغفور الرحيم اللهم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاه والسلام على رسول الله الكريم and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, do those deeds that you're able to perform every day, meaning on a very regular basis. Do those deeds that you're able to perform, for verily Allah will not tire of you until you tire of the deeds. So therefore, those things that we do every day on a consistent basis, that's what we said before, the simplest of things, Allah looks at the simplest of things that we do all the time. And many times it's a simpler thing that we do in the dunya that get us to the Jannah. The idea of that woman feeding the, the thirsty dog from the well. The idea of someone moving a, a tree from the path so no one gets stuck on it and get hurt. The idea of giving up a seat to the elderly. The idea of moving things and bringing something to your elderly grandparents. All of these simple things in life that we do consistently, Allah will give you Jannah for these things. Not the grand stand all night for Qiyam and all of these things. Sometimes we're mistaken thinking this way, but you need the consistent basis of ibadah in other areas as well. The idea of not being lazy comes from this. Again, as I mentioned to you, no other religion, no other deen regulates us and makes us not lazy, except Islam. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. The idea of knowing when to find the day, when the salah comes, and when you should make wudu, when you walk your wudu. No one in this planet is more aware than a believer on when and what in a schedule. So if missing salah is very hard, missing a day of salah is, 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 is ridiculous. And the idea of oversleeping and not feeling angry is, is amazing. These things should be in our heart. The idea that if we're lazy, that we get angry about it and say, how can this be? How can I miss this prayer? How can Allah just go and, and, and take it so small and pretend it that it's nothing? This is the idea of a believer, that the laziness prevents us from thinking this way. That we say, I don't worry about it, it's another salah. I'll pay nothing to make it up. This is not the attitude of a believer. The attitude of a believer is that it will never happen again to me. Now I'll make sure it will never really happen. May Allah guide us through that. And how profound is this? Allah bin Khattar radiallahu anhu said in a statement. And he said, Al-Qur'an Khattar in, in, in translation, I seek the protection of Allah from a time when the classic will have more energy and the disobedient will have more zeal and enthusiasm and the righteous will be lazy. And this is Umar bin Khattab, the Khalifa is uh, doing his time as the Khalifa is saying this. And look at all around us, who has the energy to commit sin more? It's the disbeliever. And the believer is sleeping and lazy at night. But these people on Friday nights, Saturday nights and Sunday nights are partying throughout the night. They have enthusiasm, zeal, they're awake, they're, they're having a good time. And yet it's the believer who is quiet, and Umar bin Khattab's dua has pretty much come true. Because all you have to do is look at the many institutions in this country that, that have this enthusiasm for sin. And yet, we believers stay quiet, and we should be the ones who should be standing and saying, Ya Allah, I'm standing for you, while others may not be standing for you. And that's what the whole idea of Ibadah at night is. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that even when they get up to Salah, there is laziness in it. وَإِذَا قَامُوا إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ يَقْوَامُوا فُسَّلَةِ That when they get up for the prayer, they get up with laziness. So even in the, in the morning, and in Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, if you're yawning too much, then you're not, you're not there. You're not there. You need to get rid of this thing. You need to get rid of this tiredness, this idea of resting and relaxing. Because you need to stand in focus for the salah. So you need to get up and have energy for it. That means what? not staying up all night, playing video games all night, doing a social networking all night, waking the entire night because the night was made for sleeping from Allah This is his command. And young people and parents should understand that no child should be staying up late at night, knowing that there's plenty of salah. If that salah is going to be missed, then this activity at night should be stopped immediately. There should be a curfew at night. There should be a curfew on the internet. There should be a curfew on the video games that, that are played at home. This is the cause of laziness. No one should be sleeping till 3 in the afternoon. Many times people come to me and say, these boys don't get up till 3 in the afternoon. Why? People go up the entire night. They wait, they go to sleep at 5 in the morning just before the salah, and then they slept for the entire afternoon. This is a spider and on itself many times. This is laziness. And parents, a lot of this are not practicing their Islam properly. And allowing this to go on in their home, and you cannot get good future from this thing. Because what will they do with their children later on in their life? They'll be worse than this. They'll allow them to be more liberal behavior. 
So a lot of the more liberal advocates can say, you can go ahead and do this, don't worry about it. You're only nine years old, you're only 12 years old, you have more time. The amount of reason yet, are we Jewish to say that there has to be some kind of age of reasoning? No, Allah kind of has made all of this. At the time of 10, you pray Salah. At the time you're 10 years old, man, you're pretty much allowed to do what? Stand in front of Allah Salah and ask for yourself. So these are all the concepts of laziness that we should be getting rid of. And there are four tips that will leave you with, inshallah. Number one, have enthusiasm and have some courage to do these ibadah in a simple, very regular manner. This is something that all of the Sahaba did on a regular basis. And no man anywhere, including myself, is, is how should I say it, uh, womanly enough or whatever you want to say, to sweep the house, to wash dishes at night, to make sure that the wife is not burdened with all of the laundry that you actually help out. To iron your own clothes, the idea of simple things at home, these are ibadah. These are looking at what Allah has given you as Yama, your spouse, and saying, I will not burden her with all the work that she has. This is laziness to sit on the sofa and watch her go back and forth for five loads of laundry. And to watch her cook dinner for you after that, and then to clean dishes after that. And to all of this is being done for the man or the boys at home do nothing. Why did the Sahaba like Abu Bakr Sadiq and Allah Umar bin Fattah used to compete with each other in London after Fajr Salah and go to this blind woman's home and they would sweep her floor, wash her dishes and clean her cupboard and then they would leave after that to do their, their daily day business. This is something we should have. No boy at home should be taught that you are a man, you don't have to do it. Every boy at home should be able to go to wash dishes and sweep at home and dust. Or why you should help your mother. This is part of that small ibadah that we're talking about. To say to mom and to dad, you said, relax, you had a fine day, let me bring you water, let me bring you something cold to drink, are you okay? Can I get you something? <coughs> to rub their feet and to say, let me get something for you, it's time for you to rest. This is something parents should teach their children and their parents, children should see from their eyes and say, I can't believe this is going on every day, and I don't, much, I don't do anything about it. This is the inculcation of getting rid of laziness. This is the idea of doing this. How are we going to But yet they have these small kindnesses all the time. Yeah, that's why the man has so many branches, and one of them is what? Is to clear the path of the street so no one gets hurt. The idea of removing danger in the path and then to save the exact things at home. To look at it and say that my mother and my mother, my mother and my father are going to go and get totally, you know, tired out. Let me help them, let me prolong their life so they can serve me and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well. This is something that's beautiful that should be done at home. And also, one of the other tips, second tip, is to be with the believers. And that's why young people should understand that if you are friends with good Muslims, they will help you when you go down. They will actually correct you when you try to do something wrong. And this is also intentionally picking things. It's easy to pick the bad first. But it's harder. It's lazy to pick bad friends, but it's harder to pick good friends. So you need to find them and say, this is the person I will be with. This is going to be my aqeem. This is going to be my brother or my sister who will help me when I'm down, who will correct me when I'm about to do something wrong, who will remind me about the salah. That's why it's important to find good friends. And number three, and finally, be understanding that there is laziness existing in every one of us. No one is immune to it. No one has this perfect ibadah that all of us are saying, ah, oh, alhamdulillah, uh, Allah has set me straight, I have found the nirwana, you know, the perfect belief. I don't do any acts of laziness, I don't procrastinate, I do things right away. I am multitasking all the time, but this is not true at all. So therefore, to understand that you have laziness once in a while, that there are times you should say, I stop for long, you sitting for hours or something, doing nothing, you say, let me go find something to do. Maybe my mother needs help, maybe my father needs help, maybe my wife needs help, maybe my husband needs help. Let me get up and do something for them. And let me go visit my aunt or my uncle and call my grandmother and my grandfather and go with them and sit with them for 10 minutes. But 6 hours is done doing nothing. 10 minutes of that time is nothing. This is part of the laziness that we should get rid of. And the idea of building communities and building... And for the after all of these people get up to Jannah, inshallah, God. And I'll read you the story of Ka'bah bin Ali radiallahu anhu who was missing in one of the jihad. And of course, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to assign the troops and battalions, and he would know that the Sahaba are included in these battalions. And of course, when they went to fight the war, they came back and they found in the war that Ka'bah bin Ali radiallahu was missing in, in, in one of the, in the battalions. So they came back and said to him, uh, Oh, Ka'bah, what happened? Are you sick? Are you not feeling well? Why are you 
why are you missing in this jihad, in this vow? And Ka'b ibn Malik said to the Rasulullah sallam, Ya Rasulullah, I have never felt as strong as I have in this time in my life. That is, I am I'm strong, I'm healthy, I, I have no issues whatsoever physically or mentally. And yet, I just felt lazy, I, I didn't go. So he told the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that I was lazy, I had trouble. It, this disease of uh, shaitan came and hit me and I stayed behind. And the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, because you have spoken the truth, Allah has forgiven you. So the idea of owning up to the idea of laziness is also a very important concept itself. That you stand and say, and look in the mirror and say, you're not always perfect. You're lazy a lot of times. You're lazy sometimes. You should have done this when you should have done this. So therefore, may Allah Ta'ala guide us to all of these things and bring us to the better way and to a better life in this dunya and in the afterlife. قال الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على جميع الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى سائر الصحابة والتابعين اللهم عين الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم ثبتنا على الإسلام اللهم نور قلوبنا من نور الإيمان اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنا تسميهم قريبا وجيب الدعوات اللهم أيد الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم ثبتنا على الإسلام اللهم نور قلوبنا من نور الإيمان اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات اللهم أيد الإسلام وفي مجاهدين في كل مكان يا رب العالمين اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات ربنا ظلمنا لمنا انفسنا وان لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين ربنا حب لنا من ازواجنا وضياتنا قرة اعين واجعلنا للمتقين اماما ربنا اتنا في الدنيا حسنه وفي الاخره حسنه وقنا عذاب النار ربنا اتنا من لدنك رحمه وحيد لنا من امرنا رشدا وصلى الله تعالى على خير خلقه محمد وعلى اله واصحابه اجمعين الى الله ان الله يقبل العبد والانسان والانساء الى القرب وينفع الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يئسكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله يذكركم ولذكر الله تعالى اعلى اولى وعز وجل وتم وعم واكبر اقيموا الصلاه ان الصلاه تنهى للفحشاء والمنكر